Hello folks, Mike here. We're going to do a little uh, troubleshooting video. I got this gun in from a customer. He said that the uh, solenoid's leaking, the solenoid is blown. Uh, he had the pressure in his tank set up for 550-600 PSI and said his buddy uh, used his gun, then screwed up a standard 800 PSI tank, which this is what this is, and that it blew a solenoid and the solenoid's now leaking and, and won't work. Now, I'd like to say that these, these solenoids are pretty hardy. All right? they're, they're designed to take a lot of abuse and they will vent. You know, if you have your velocity set you know, in the high 300s. So that can easily be averted by you know, screwing down the uh, HPR or the high pressure regulator and reducing the velocity uh, oftentimes. So... With that being said, I thought this would be a great opportunity to take this gun that just came in, as it is, and do a little troubleshooting video. So, I'm going to start her up. A little error up. Powering on. Welcome to the Lux Experience. Battery level 75%. Firing mode. Semi-automatic. Alright, before we start... Uh, you can actually fire these guns without having to power up the board, but I thought I'd go through the whole thing just to make sure that, one, the solenoid's working electronically, you know, when uh, when we turn the eyes off. Vision off. So, you can hear the... You can hear the solenoid clicking. The board's indicating... That the solenoid's fine. You see the little uh, red light, and I can hear the solenoid click. So right off the bat, I can tell that the solenoid one is working electronically because it's clicking. Uh, if it wasn't working electronically, there's a manual fire button back here. There's a cutout in the back of the frame, and a little white button back here. When the gun's aired up, you can actually push that button, and it will fire the the solenoid, fire the gun you know, without having electricity to the board or having power to the board. So, if I air up the gun, you can hear it leaking. It's leaking from inside the frame. And I can I can feel the air leaking from the front of the noid. Alright? Like I said, you can fire this gun manually by pushing that button. Alright? So I know the solenoid's working. We heard it working electronically, so the first thing that I'm going to do when I'm trying to troubleshoot this gun is I'm going to reduce the pressure in the HPR, the high pressure regulator. Now, a common misconception is that I screw it in, screw it in, you know, righty tighty, lefty loosey, screw it in to reduce the pressure. That's actually the wrong way. Screwing it in increases the pressure. The air is coming in, coming through the gun into the regulator, to the bottom, and then coming up through the piston and everything else, and then going back into the gun. So, if I screw it in, that is lifting or increasing the pressure into this gun and making the vent, the noid vent like it is. So, what I want to do is I'm going to try screwing it out. And as we can see, we already start here in the reduce and the leak. Now, just put my my hand over the front of this gun. I can tell it's shooting extremely hot, so it's still probably shooting in the high 300s. So I'm going to back her off a little bit more. Still kind of hot. That feels about right. I, I've, I've fired a lot of these guns, and I know what the pressure feels like coming out of these things. And I can tell that's still probably in the high, you know. 290s area, but as you can see by simply turning the HPR down, the noid is now not venting, and there is absolutely no leak whatsoever. Um, and looking at this before I started this video, I also noticed you know another thing uh, which I thought would be a great opportunity for this uh, this video was the the board programming. So uh, while the gun you know, is 
in static or with the eyes off or whatever. Moving on. Uh, we can enter the programming mode by uh, pushing the joystick programming in a direction. Mode. Main menu. Firing mode. All right. Now, I, you notice I'm pushing down, but it's not really registering every single time I push down. It's, it's every now and then that when I push down. This is a common problem uh, or a common thing that I see, you know, sometimes with uh, with the board. There's nothing wrong with the board. Oftentimes, there's actually nothing wrong with the, you know, the joystick or the little pad that the this joystick actually sits into. Sometimes when the when the boards are put in, they may be you know misaligned just a hair, and that problem uh, can be averted. You know, see, I've touching down, and it's not uh, going into any any mode. If we simply loosen these three screws here and simply shift the board a little bit, oftentimes that alleviates that problem there. So, you know, if I'm pushing, if I'm pushing down, that means I might need to adjust the board a little bit. So, let's give that a shot. Let me get my, uh, my small, teeny tiny Allen wrench here. Somebody's, somebody's little boogers are on there tight. Alright, make sure she's in there nice and snug. I'm just going to break her free a little bit. Alright, so I'm going to take them out, but I'm just going to loose them just a little bit. I'm going to shift the board. As you can see, that I don't get to tell by the uh, camera or not, but there's some play. The board moves a little bit. All right, so I'm going to shift her down just a little bit. I'm going to tighten these bad boys up. I'm not going to crank them down yet because I want to find that absolute perfect point. Semi-automatic. Semi-automatic. So now you can see the down portion of the uh, the uh, joystick is working pretty much every time I pull the trigger or every time I pull the uh, joystick now. So that lets me know that the board was just misaligned a little bit. So. I'm going to go down here and fine tune it. Yeah, actually, I'm pushing down, you know, towards the ASA. And then I'm going to tighten her up a little bit. If I can get that in there. I snug those up. And then just give them a little snug. Alright. Not over tightening them, but just a little snug because I don't want to strip those, uh, those Allen heads out. So, my, it's registering like every other hit. So, I may need to do just a little bit more adjustment on her.
So now she's registering every single time I push down. So now we've fixed the uh, bore positioning. We've fixed the leaking solenoid simply by unscrewing the solenoid. And she's ready to go. I'll take her outside. We'll uh, chrono her. But I can't do it right now. Otherwise my neighbors would be very, uh, very mad because it's uh, kind of late here in California. But, um, you know, we've we've solved two problems. Some Two easy problems. Um, and we don't have to send our, our gun back to DLX for them to, to do that. Now, also, I know I covered it in, in my uh, Lux tutorial, but when they were, I've seen some questions about the feather touch and the manifold. Now, feather touch, especially with a 2.0 uh, Lux like this is, the frame is cut out right here. This is your feather touch screw here. This is not adjustable. It's either in or it's out. If you take it out, there's a little uh, holster right here for it to put it in. Uh, like I said in my first time Lux uh, user tutorial, do not crank this this puppy down. If you crank it down, you risk strip or uh, breaking the head off the screw, and then you're you know you're gonna have to replace the uh, feather touch, the whole manifold that's on top of this solenoid. All right, so just put her down, give her a nice little snug. She's got an O-ring, a little teeny tiny O-ring on the end of her. Uh, should be fine. If you want her out, simply put her right here in this little screw uh, receptacle for the feather touch. And that's that's the feather touch. Now, in talking with the manifold, the manifold is this tiny little screw here. Okay, This is adjustable. The feather touch is not. Feather touch in or feather touch out. The manifold, when they talk about flush, they're talking about bringing this screw all the way till it's flush with the surface of this manifold here and then one and a half turns in is generally we're you know kind of kind of stock setting so if you screw it all the way out looking at it when it's flush with this surface then you watch your allen head and you put it in and you go with half a turn and then go all the way around until your allen head is pointing back towards you that's one and a half turns in you can adjust them further, but that's completely up to you. And you, uh, you Lux tinkerers that like to work with the uh, the manifold, uh, that's that's how you adjust that. Now, by adjusting the the feather touch works by slowing down the forward stroke of the bolt. Okay, if you have the feather touch out, the for the forward stroke of the bolt is going full tilt. Putting the feather touch in, it actually slows it down by using air pressure. To put a little cushion of air to help with brittle paint. If you don't want to use the, uh, the feather touch, simply take it out and that forward stroke of the bolt is unrestricted. Now the rearward stroke of the bolt is adjusted by this manifold. This manifold adjusts how fast the rearward, the rearward stroke of the bolt operates. So you can reduce recoil by adjusting that. However, if you adjust the manifold down more, you're going to start limiting the cyclic rate of the gun. Now, those of you that are only working in you know PSP 12 and a half uh, balls per second, that may not be a huge huge deal to you, and you may actually be able to make this a little bit smoother than it already is by adjusting the manifold. However, if you adjust it too much, you may not be able to obtain that uh, firing rate that you wanted. So that's the difference between the manifold. And the feather touch, and how to you know check for a a blown solenoid, and how to adjust the uh, joystick you know if you're not getting a uh, a reading you know when you're pushing down. Theoretic, I mean, typically I, I, I see the problems when you're adjusting the uh, the joystick down. So uh, once you're done with your settings, simply hold uh, the power button for a second. and she's ready to go. So if you want to reset the settings in the board all to stock settings, uh, you simply hold down the, uh, the trigger, uh, go back into uh, programming mode. Programming mode, main menu, all right. firing mode. Hold down the trigger. You hear those clicks? Now the board has been completely reset to stock settings. 
if you have any question as to what the uh, stock settings are, in your manual, I'll get this. Uh, in your manual, there's a uh, sheet, kind of like this, that goes through and tells you where all the the stock settings are and that are highlighted. Uh, they DLX used to uh, give these with with the the, use, the older guns. I haven't seen them in, in some of the newer guns, but I always keep one of these just on hand. As you can see, it's pretty beaten up because I use it all the time. But it tells you what all the stock settings are. But like I said, you can uh, get that through the manual, uh, through the DLX website on the PDF format. And it'll show you what all the, uh, the stock settings are. So now we've set this gun back up to stock settings. And now all i got to do is take it back outside and re to uh, 280, which is normally what my fields operate. And uh, we're done. The, the solenoid is not, not broken. And... You know, we don't have to pay, uh, pay for, you know, a $90 solenoid to, uh, to replace it. So, simple problems that have been averted. Uh, hopefully this, uh, this video helps with some questions. Alright, thanks.